Psalms 121 and verse 4, He that keeps Israel uh, neither slumbers nor sleeps. As we know that the Lord uh, God is thy keeper. And in Genesis 12 and 3, it reminds us that it says, I will bless those that bless you, and I will curse those that curse you. So and we're always... Uh, we're also commanded there in Psalms 122 to pray uh, for the peace of Jerusalem. So just wanted to share that this morning with what's going on. Uh, we know these things must come to pass. And he says, it wax worse and worse to the end. Uh, but uh, the end has not yet come. We don't know when that'll be. Uh, but it certainly seems to be pointing to that direction. Uh, but our lesson today is that Jesus uh, is entitled... Uh, Jesus' authority uh, over demons. And we're studying in uh, the book of Mark, chapter 9, verses uh, 14 uh, through 29. And so we know that faith is, is one of the key words uh, in our Christian uh, life, right? Because we are saved uh, by faith in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. Uh, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And in verse 9, it tells us that not of works, lest any man should boast. And then we're to uh, live by faith, right? In 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 7, for we walk by faith, uh, not by sight. And so we have uh, to exercise our faith, right? And we don't generate it uh, within ourselves. It tells us there it's nothing uh, of ourselves. So uh, it's a wonderful uh, gift that comes to us uh, from God uh, through his spirit. And then often uh, in our walk, uh, we face uh, certain uh, tests and trials that, that come our way that, that God's allow, uh, he allows those to come our way. And then uh, while I was studying that, I was reminded uh, of just trusted in God, right? He still kept uh, the faith and he still had his love uh, for God, even though his wife said, won't you just curse uh, your God and die? He didn't do that. He kept the faith. He kept uh, trusting and believing in God's word. Uh, so God designs these tests for us, and we grow uh, through them, right? And it deepens uh, our own uh, faith. In James uh, chapter 1, verses uh, 2 through 5, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. And so our lesson today, uh, we take a look at, at a great test uh, of faith here in this, uh, these verses that we're going to study. And we look uh, as ourselves as Americans, we, we're kind of infatuated with power at times. We are. Uh, we like to hear and follow uh, powerful people. Uh, and then we were kind of captivated even uh, by powerful race cars. You know, we like to, I don't care much for racing, but some people do. They're, they're fascinated with the power of those race cars. And there are a lot of us that we sometimes get fascinated with uh, maybe some powerful uh, athletes that we watch or so. And then we seem to just be sort of obsessed uh, with power within ourselves. But when it comes uh, sometimes to our Christian lives, we, we are usually not as concerned about power. Uh, our testimony is weak. Right? We don't want to have a weak uh, testimony, but sometimes the testimony is weak. It's not powerful. And then sometimes we falter maybe within our prayer life, and we, it becomes uh, weak and not powerful. And then sometimes our faith uh, seems to grow weak and not powerful. But we look here in Mark uh, chapter 9, uh, and it's going to help us uh, really get a, a clearer picture uh, of what it means to have uh, a powerful uh, faith this morning. So we begin with uh, Mark chapter 9, verse uh, 14. Uh, and when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, uh, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye uh, with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and he gnasheth with his teeth, and he penneth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered him and saith, O faithless generation, 
How long shall I be with you? How long shall I, shall I suffer you? Uh, bring him unto me. And so here's Jesus along with Peter, James, uh, and John. They were descending uh, from the Mount uh, of Transfiguration. And I looked up the, the transfigura Transfiguration. Uh, it was the glory of God that was revealed uh, in the scriptures. The glory of God is often uh, presented as a light. And Jesus there, he was transfigured. Uh, it is of the veil uh, of his flesh was, was pulled back and the disciples could see uh, the light of the glory of God shining uh, forth. And then uh, you know, we know that Jesus is God, right? Uh, and from uh, him shines uh, the glory uh, of God. And we read in Mark chapter 9, verses uh, 2 through 13. But I only did uh, 2 through 8. Uh, but and after six days, Jesus taketh him, Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up uh, into a high mountain apart by themselves. Uh, and he was transfigured uh, before them. Uh, and his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto them Elias, Elias with Moses, and they were talking uh, with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, is it good for us to be here? And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. For we wist not what to say, for they were sore afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And suddenly when they looked around about, they saw no man any more, save Jesus only uh, with themselves. And so here Jesus, he found the rest of his disciples there and the Jewish scribes, and they were uh, disputing among themselves, like some people do in church. We like to dispute among ourselves. Uh, that's what was going on at this, uh, in this uh, lesson today. Uh, and the exchanges continued uh, to draw a large crowd of, of people gathered there to observe this event, and that happens now. If something's going on, if you see a bunch of police or fire trucks or whatever the case may be, that it just draws everybody out of the woodwork, right? Everybody wants to come see uh, what's going on. So uh, a large crowd had gathered here. But when Jesus approached uh, this crowd, they immediately uh, turned uh, toward him and greeting him. And so Jesus, we see here, he then asked uh, the people the reason uh, for their arguing and disputing, right? Uh, and one of the men in the crowd uh, addressed him, uh, the Savior, and told him uh, that the issue uh, concerned uh, this pitiful situation uh, that his son was facing, that his son was going through. Uh, a demon had afflicted uh, his son <clears throat> so that he could not speak uh, or hear. And I believe every sickness that comes about is, is a demon uh, from the pits of hell, right? And that's what had taken place with this uh, young man here. And furthermore, uh, he was saying, whosoever he, the demon, uh, was taking his son, and it was tareth in him, uh, and he was foaming and gnashing uh, with his teeth and penneth away. Uh, he was going through all types of convulsions and carrying on uh, with this demon that had latched a hold uh, of his son. And so the man uh, continued by saying that he had spoken to his uh, disciples that they uh, should cast him out, and they could not. Apparently they had tried. Apparently they had tried to lay hands maybe on this, this boy to cast out this demon and, and their attempt to drive the demon out, uh, but they were uh, unable to do so. Uh, they couldn't do it. Maybe the reason was they was trying to do it because of who they were, uh, trying to do it within uh, themselves. And so, but they couldn't do it. So that's what was causing uh, all this arguing and all this disputing uh, going on. Verse 19, uh, he had answered him and saith, O faithless generation, uh, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? I think there's a lot of, of faithless uh, generation within our day. A lot of people don't have the faith uh, that they once had. They don't believe uh, in the power of God that they once did. Uh, they don't believe in the power uh, of God uh, healing the sick and causing the, the lame to walk or even the dead uh, to rise. People don't have uh, that type of faith it, don't, it seems like. Uh, verse 20, and they brought him unto him uh, and when he saw him straightway the spirit tear him uh, and he fell on the ground and wallowed uh, foaming 
And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And often times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. So Jesus here, he was moved uh, by this boy's uh, condition uh, and the disciples' inability here uh, to heal uh, the child. And so Jesus, in addressing uh, the crowd as a whole, he said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Uh, bring him unto me. But when the spirit, this evil spirit here, uh, saw Jesus, uh, it caused the boy to go into seizures. Uh, that threw him to the ground in helplessness. It's like when Jesus came across uh, the man called Legion, right? Uh, the demons within, what thou have thou to do with us, uh, Jesus? They wanted Jesus to go away, you know, but why? Because the power of God was there. Uh, the Spirit of God was there. The anointing uh, was there. Uh, the demons can't uh, stand against the power of God, right? Uh, they all, uh, even the, the devils, uh, cower uh, at the very name of Jesus, right? Uh, and so the Spirit here, it saw Jesus, and it caused this boy uh, to go into those seizures and throw him in a helpless uh, state, worse than what he already was. But in response to Jesus' question, the father here, he explained that his son had been afflicted from his childhood, probably indicating this could have been going on for the boy was maybe just a several, several years of age. But the father further stated here to us that the demon had often tried to destroy his son by burning and drowning him. Uh, the devil tries to destroy us, right? He tries uh, to kill us, right? He wants to, to do harm and do evil against us. And that's what this evil uh, demon spirit was doing with this young uh, boy. And so uh, at this point, the distraught father, uh, he cried out to the Lord Jesus. Uh, a lot of times we put ourselves to where we get to, to so distraught that that's when we'll finally call out to him. Uh, and that's what the father was doing. He said, if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus responded, though. He responded to this father. Uh, he didn't respond to him in anger uh, or boastfulness. He responded to this father, really, uh, in tenderness. And that's the way we are uh, to respond, right, with tenderness, uh, not with, with um, being uh, belligerent, I guess, uh, or putting someone down, Jesus responded with tenderness, with the assurance here to this Father that all things are possible to him <coughs> that believeth. And so Jesus had identified here the very heart of the issue here with the Father. The very heart was, the issue was with the Father's belief or his faith. But Jesus here, he encouraged the man to exercise confidence uh, in him. Uh, and have faith uh, in his power to deliver this boy from the demon possession. So Jesus identified that the father's weak faith was shining through. He identified uh, this because of the father's words. He just said, if thou canst, right? If you can, please do something to help. It wasn't, he didn't say, I know you can. <clears throat> he just said, if thou can." But Jesus wanted uh, this father here to understand, and he wants us to understand uh, this morning that faith uh, is believing that he can do all things, right? And all things, and then trusting uh, in him to do that uh, which is good. So we know that faith allows us uh, to trust in the very ability uh, of Jesus to do anything. And all we, all we have to do is just expect him uh, to do what he knows is best, right? We just have the faith and trust uh, in the ability of him. Trust in the Lord. The song says, I'm going to trust in the Lord to the day I die. We put all of our faith, our hope, our trust uh, in the Lord Jesus. We don't put it in man, uh, no matter who they are. Uh, we don't do that. We put our faith and trust uh, in God because no... Uh, preacher can save you no preacher can heal you it's the power of jesus working through uh, that individual and we just have to expect in that uh, ability and that faith that the power of god's going to move uh, for us in our situation 
verse 24 and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears Lord I believe help thou mine unbelief and when Jesus saw that the people came running together he rebuked the foul spirit saying unto him thou dumb and deaf spirit I charge thee come out of him and enter no more into him and the spirit cried and rent him sore, and it came out of him, and he was as one dead. Insomuch that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. So this father here was ready uh, to exercise his faith uh, in the Lord. But he also recognized uh, that he had a weakness uh, of his faith. He said, Lord, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief and sometimes we find ourselves as this father we believe in the power of Jesus but our faith is a little weak so then we cry out to the Lord to help us uh, with our unbelief and we've all had that at some time we've had this issue uh, that we believe but we still let uh, doubts and then we let Satan enter uh, into our minds and then we need to call out just as this father did uh, to help thou mine unbelief and so the Father had given Jesus enough evidence here uh, of faith that the Lord responded to it uh, by healing uh, the Son. Jesus rebuked uh, this foul spirit. He said unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee uh, to come out of him and enter uh, no more into him. So this evil spirit, uh, it had to obey. It had to obey. Of the words of Jesus Christ. It had to obey the authority, right? Jesus has all authority. So the devil, the demon, uh, had to obey it. It had to listen uh, to Jesus. And so, in so doing so, uh, this uh, evil spirit, it afflicted uh, this little boy just one uh, last time. And he, the, the demon did it so uh, severely uh, that many here in the crowd, uh, they thought that the boy uh, was dead. But Jesus uh, lovingly and tenderly uh, reached down and lifted uh, the boy uh, and returned him uh, to his grateful uh, father. And it reminds me of a song I sing. He reached down his hand uh, for me. Uh, the Lord Jesus reached down uh, his hand uh, for this little boy. And Jesus' words were of authority. Uh, no demon in hell can ever defy uh, the command or the words uh, of God, the, the Jesus Christ. And the demon tried one last time uh, to kill this boy. He tried one more time uh, to do bodily harm uh, to this boy. But Jesus, Jesus just calmly helped him uh, up. The demon tried his best uh, to overpower the power of Jesus. But we know that's just not the case. That's not going to happen. Uh, the devil doesn't have any more, uh, doesn't have power over God. Uh, God has all power uh, over everything. Uh, but he tried one more time. But I've got uh, that good news for us this morning. There is no uh, greater power than that uh, of the living God, uh, of Jesus, who has all uh, the power over death, uh, hell, uh, and the grave. Uh, we know that he has all power uh, over sickness uh, and disease. And we know in John chapter 4, uh, verse 12, Jesus tells us there, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go uh, unto my Father. And then in ver uh, Luke chapter 10, uh, verse 19, it tells us, Behold, I give, you unto, give unto you power uh, to tread on serpents uh, and scorpions, and all, uh, over all the power uh, of the enemy. And nothing uh, shall by any means uh, hurt you. We have to be bold and have the faith and believe in what Jesus tells us there in John 14 and 12 and in Luke 10 verse 19 that he gives us all power uh, over the enemy, not just some, uh, not just a little, but he says he gives us all power uh, over the enemy and he tells us that nothing shall by any means harm us. So Jesus was uh, more than enough here. He was more than enough to overcome uh, the attempts of this demon. And we could possibly maybe imagine, we've all got imaginations, right? We could maybe see uh, this demon here uh, kind of laughing, right? 
maybe laughing uh, at what he's done uh, to this little boy, uh, that he's uh, maybe uh, got the victory here. Maybe he's trying to play a game of chess uh, with Jesus here, but he's laughing like I just left this kid lying here like a corpse. Now it's your move, Jesus. You see what you can do. See what you can do to, to counter that. But as the crowd watched, and the father was probably standing there all upset and, and, and bothered and uh, full of emotions, right? Because they see his son uh, lying there just like a corpse. He thought, man, my child died, and here's uh, Jesus was here. But um, as the crowd watched uh, at his son's stillness, and Jesus just took the boy's hand uh, and brought him uh, to his feet. So it's just like what happens within our own lives. When it looks like we're down uh, for the count, when it looks like all the demons uh, of hell are laughing, maybe at our condition, uh, Jesus, the Son of God, uh, reaches down his hand uh, for ours and for mine. And what does he do? He lifts uh, us up, right? Uh, he brings uh, the healing maybe that we need, or he brings uh, the help uh, that we need. Uh, and he has all uh, the power over uh, the devil. We have nothing to fear, right? Just have our faith and trust in him. We have nothing to fear. We don't fear what man uh, can do to us, all right? Because we have God. We have the Spirit living within us. We have Jesus and God on our side. Uh, so we have nothing to fear. Just have faith, all right? Verse 28, And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer uh, and fasting. So later here in these two verses, the disciples asked uh, Jesus why uh, they could not cast out this demon from the boy. And the Lord here, he responded that this kind can come forth by nothing but prayer uh, and fasting. There's a lot of ministers, Brother Hall and my dad, I've seen healings in, in those services. Uh, but they only came uh, by their prayer and by their fasting. I've seen my dad fast for days and uh, have to smell <laughs> the food cooking or whatever the case may be, but he's spent time and much uh, prayer and fasting. And this only comes by that, it, Jesus tells us. And he says this kind of miracle could only occur with a prolonged or focused uh, prayer. Uh, and fasting and dependence uh, on the Lord, uh, which they had apparently not done. These, these disciples must have not uh, spent a lot of time uh, in prayer, a lot of time in fasting. Uh, but Jesus taught his disciples here that spiritual victory over uh, the powers of hell, and uh, it demands a commitment to God through prayer uh, and self-denial, because there again, it's nothing that we can do within ourselves. It's nothing that any preacher can do within himself, but it's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit that's dwelling uh, and living within that person. They have a, a great connection there, right? Uh, that they can, can pray for us and, and believe, and we have the faith and God will move uh, through the, through the, the power uh, of his word. But he taught these disciples here uh, in Mark chapter 6, verse 7, where he says the disciples were given the power over unclean, right? They were given the power over the unclean spirits. And he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirits. And then in uh, six, uh, ch chapter 6, verse 13, and they cast out many devils, the disciples did. And they anointed with oil many that were sick uh, and healed them. But this time, the disciples didn't have that same result that they had three chapters earlier. They didn't have the same result <clears throat> by praying for this young boy that was uh, demon-possessed. And why? It's because they really uh, relied on themselves instead of the power of God. I think they got a little uh, too much high on the totem pole. Maybe their head swelled a little too big, and they thought they could do it uh, on their own or within their own way. Uh, but we can't do anything within ourselves just because we live for God, and it's but it's his power, not ours, that saves and heals. There's nothing that I can say here this morning or anything I can do within my own human natural self that's going to heal you or save you. It takes the Holy Spirit, the power of God, uh, to get into a man's heart and save him. Uh, it takes the power of God to heal the sick. Uh, so we pray in the name of Jesus, right? And we pray in the name of Jesus. It's nothing we have uh, within ourselves, but we have uh, what was within us, the Holy Spirit uh, of God. 
in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall uh, remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So that reminds me of a little song. Faith, faith, faith. Just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot. Just use what you got. Faith, faith, faith. We don't have a mustard seed here this morning, but in Bible times, that was one of the, the smallest seeds that there were, a mustard seed. So that's all the faith we got to have. We don't have to have a faith as big as this church. He said faith is a grain of a mustard seed. And so uh, we must really daily uh, renew our trust uh, in God, renew that trust and faith in God. We have to trust uh, and believe in God's Word. Um, powerful faith believes Jesus can and believes that He will do uh, whatever accomplishes the Father's will uh, and is best for us. God's going to give us His best, right? <clears throat> and powerful faith is powerful. Why? Because Jesus is all powerful. Uh, and he's, we just simply <clears throat> rely on Him, rely on Jesus. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So biblical faith this morning has substance, right? A solid, meaningful quality to it. Uh, that it really impacts uh, us in our in our daily lives uh, in expressive uh, ways to us, and so <clears throat> power doesn't uh, inhere in faith just in itself. Uh, but faith uh, isn't a, a magical way really to manipulate reality. Instead, faith is effective. Why? Uh, because it is the means by which we access uh, the very help of God Himself, uh, with whom all things. Uh, are possible. Jesus said, if thou cast what only believe all things, not some things, not just what matters to us. He said all things are possible. Matthew chapter 19 verse 26, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. What seems impossible to men is possible with God. When the doctor tells you there's nothing more they can do, there's no more hope, it seems impossible. But it's not impossible with God because he said all things are possible. And so faith is a very conviction. John Calvin, he commented that God will never forsake us if we keep the door open for receiving his grace. And he says he cannot help but move uh, in the lives of those who cry out to him day and night in Luke chapter 18 verses 7 through 8 and shall not God avenge his only leg which cry day and night unto him though he bear long uh, with them I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the son of man cometh shall he find faith on the earth and I want to have that continuing faith uh, in God that continuing faith uh, in his son Jesus Christ this morning I believe that God can do all things not just some not just little things but all things uh, everything is very possible uh, with God why because he said it was he says it is whatever God says is the truth he don't go back on his word there's nothing that he says it's a lie it's all true yea and amen right God can do all things are possible. All we got to do is have faith uh, and believe uh, in God. Believe uh, in His Son, Jesus. So when we pray, we should pray with a, a great confidence. We should have great confidence in knowing uh, that all things are possible with God. And we who have uh, placed our faith uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ this morning and we believe uh, in the power of prayer, uh, sometimes we find ourselves in the same situation, maybe, uh, as this father in today's lesson this morning. And we want to cry out to the Lord. We want to say, Lord, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. Uh, we believe that the Lord has the power. We believe he has the power to change uh, matters. He has the power to change the hearts 
uh, of kings, right, and leaders. He has uh, the power to do that. And we believe in that. Uh, but we don't want to occasionally struggle, though, with our confidence in Him. We don't want to have that struggle. We want to keep our confidence and our faith and trust uh, in Him this morning. And then we can look back uh, in our lives. We can look back uh, in the history of things that's happened maybe uh, in years gone by. We can look back on that and we can see that God was working uh, on our behalf. We can see uh, how he's answered prayers for us uh, in the past. And then we can ask uh, friends uh, to pray for us, right? Brother Danny Honeycutt, preacher up at Cornerstone, ever once in a while he'll send me a text I'm praying for you this morning brother and more times than not I've received that text when I'm going through something and I ain't told him a thing about it don't talk to him on a daily basis I don't but he'll send it to me and it's God's word to me to, to, to keep my faith uh, strong and my confidence uh, going strong and my belief going strong because it, it seemed like it occurs more times than not uh, when I've got some, some bad news or, or facing another trial and then I'll get a message from him uh, that the Lord spoke to my heart this morning I'm praying for you it happens that's the truth wouldn't tell you that to be trying to boast any man it ain't because of brother Danny but it's the spirit of God that, that, that moved uh, within him knowing that I needed a friend, knowing that I needed someone to pray for me. It's happened uh, several times over the last five, six years. Really a lot within the last couple. You know, with the face the, the things that's, you know, the doctors uh, keep finding this B cell lymphoma places on me. I don't know why I got them. It's not within my body. Uh, I don't feel sick. I don't look sick. I don't guess if I look sick this morning. But uh, maybe it's a thorn in the flesh. I don't know why, why it keeps occurring. Uh, but they took them off and they're gone for now. And I pray to God they don't come back. Uh, but I got that text from him when I got received the, seen the spots again and went to the doctor. And sure enough, that's what it was. But I got a text from, from Danny a couple of days after that because he, the Lord spoke to a man of God, uh, that Jonathan Crump needs you to pray for him this morning. Needs you to pray for him so that his faith will stay strong, that he'll believe uh, in the word of God, believe uh, for the healing, right? Because God said all things are possible. All things. He's got the power over every sickness and disease that comes against us. It's not sent from God. God doesn't make people sick. He doesn't put cancer within someone's uh, body. It's all attacks uh, from the devil, from, from the pits of hell. But God offers the healing for that. He has the power over all things. And so we look back on that, and it increases our faith. And it makes us have a greater confidence uh, in the power of the Lord. It doesn't mean uh, he will always regret uh, grant uh, a request uh, the way we ask it or the way we want it, but it does mean that we can have complete confidence uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ this morning that he is able to act on our behalf and he's able to do what he sees uh, fit for our lives. And so we want to pray with great confidence this morning that the Lord, uh, because he is able to do all uh, that we ask for. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So we want to keep the faith. We want to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't want to have any doubt. We want the Lord to get the doubt out of our mind, out of our hearts, to help us with our unbelief. Help us with unbelief if we have it this morning. We won't, don't want to have any unbelief in the power of God. We want to have the faith and believe uh, in his word and what he can do for us. Mother, will you uh, dismiss us this morning?